Hello. I'm sorry, I... You look like someone. My sister, a long time ago. I'm sorry. Could I show you a picture? That's her there, Sarah. And that's our mum and dad, adoptive, obviously. And that's me, trying to be the taller one. <laughs> Sarah and I were in competition from the moment we were born. It's just how things are in an orphanage, or at least that's what mum told us. The cutest baby gets picked by the best parents. <laughs> Which to her meant we were fucking adorable. <laughs> you know, mum and dad were only supposed to adopt one of us. They refused to tell us which. <laughs> Though I've seen the baby photos, and we all know the answer. But by then, we threw a fit. Blah, blah, how sweet. And like the wonderful, open-hearted people they were, they brought the both of us to London with them. Our names were changed to Sarah and Philippa after their mums. And we were their pride and joy. Dad wasn't around loads, so we were really mums to deal with, which she was more than happy about. <laughs> she was a smart woman, our mum. She really was. She grew up in bumfuck nowhere, somewhere Midlandy, with a nightmare dad and wet white mum, and three snotty little brothers who might as well have called her mum for all the care their actual mother took of them. But she was hard-working, smart, and hot. So she worked her perky little ass off, got into Oxford, found Dad, and never worked another day in her life again. Maybe they couldn't conceive. Maybe Mum's obsession with Angelina Jolie was her obsession got the best of her. Who knows? Either way, here we were. Sarah and Pip, her little china dolls. We wore adorable matching outfits, ate adorable matching meals, and played with kids whose parents had adorable matching bank accounts to ours. It was fucking great. <laughs> but then our lives changed forever. Basically, some London fashion social media guru guy took a picture of us with mum walking about Kensington in our little outfits and put it on his Instagram. It went viral. Mum saw the comments, and then the project really began. I can't say I remember loads of my childhood. A therapist told me it was a trauma response, and maybe it was. But honestly, I think I just spent so much time putting my life into pictures and little videos that now I can't see it as anything more. I remember watching Mum edit videos of herself, making cute bento-style lunches, then later scrolling through comments about how wonderful it is that she's helping us connect with our culture. I also remember watching Sarah's follower counts rise, as mine lagged awkwardly behind. I was a bit fat, you see, harder to idolize. And the bit part, meaning it couldn't be capitalized upon. Not fat enough to be a body positivity influencer and not thin enough to be pretty much everything else. So, mum didn't know what to do with me. 
I didn't know what to do with me. Thing is, I was desperate. I was 18 and stupid and living in my beautiful, wonderful, fucking infuriating twin sister's shadow and I needed to get out. So, I lied. And all of a sudden, we were equal again. And then I surpassed her and the content was so easy to make. I painted little flags on my cheeks, collaborated with other LGBT creators, sang silly songs about the highs and lows of my newfound bisexuality. I followed the formula and got exactly what I wanted. Mum started asking me about my day. I got praise for my bravery and authenticity. I felt the happiest and ironically most myself online than I ever had before. But then my relationship with Sarah started to crumble. We'd always been the perfect duo. Sarah was the bright, messy gossip and I her snarky, reserved sidekick. Mum used to call us her sun and moon. Everyone knew I privately resented Sarah, but that was how it had always been, and until this, how we assumed it would always be. But now, all of a sudden, Mum was spending more energy on my life, and neither of us knew how to handle it. I don't know. We stopped sharing secrets. We stopped being sisters, basically. And then came our 21st birthday. Mum organized this whole massive thing with catering and fondue and the best of London's D-list. But at that point, I didn't care about any of that. I had a plan. I'd kept up the lie for three years now, and I missed my sister like fucking hell. I wanted out. Tonight, I was going to tell her, and the news would come out, and I would face the backlash, and I would be honest and myself with her again. The first time I tried to tell her, she was pulled aside by mum to discuss the tequila boat. The second time, we were out on the balcony, probably chatting shit, and just as I was about to say it, I had to run to the toilet and be sick. I was sat in a stairwell, sometime toward the end of the night when I finally worked up the courage to do it. But just as I stood up to go find her, there was literally the biggest noise I'd ever heard. This massive somewhere really close by, but not inside the flat. And in my head, I thought maybe it was like a missile or an alien invasion. And I think for a couple of seconds, we were all sort of considering whether or not we should do something or like what we should do or where we should go. Then just at that moment of what the fuck was that silence about to fade back into normal, whatever, everything from the main room ran through the door and stampeded down the stairs. It was like a flood of exclamation marks burst into a room full of question marks. And then I was up and we were all running down the stairs. And then we were outside breathing cold air and there was a massive clump of people gathered around the window of the flat below ours. I was thinking, shit, did someone jump out of the window? I started to push through the people but there actually weren't as many people as I thought because they weren't just gathered around a body. It was 
the whole balcony and a lot of the side of the building just smashed on the floor. This pile, metal bars and slabs and crumbled up bits of concrete and wall and broken glass fucking everywhere and bodies. And I got this feeling like I was going to be sick again. And suddenly, I was on the other side of the pile. And Sarah was right there. She was missing part of her head, like this bit, just a side, scooped out. Her eyes were closed. Her makeup looked really good. She was pinned under all the stuff from about the waist down, and her hands were sort of at her sides under other stuff, and she was just like draped. Her head was on the ground, and she was facing up. Little porcelain nose pointing up towards the sky. And I sat with her for a while, I think. I don't remember when I stopped hearing, but I must have, because there wasn't any sound while I was there on the floor. Just my hand tracing lines in powder and my other hand fiddling with her perfect black hair. My social media and many others developed a highlight titled Sarah, full of pictures of her laughing and swimming and eating cake. And with the words, fly high or rest in peace angel, <laughs> written somewhere in a pretty font. My Sarah highlight was next to my coming out story. I'm going to die soon. Found out today. Glioblastoma, brain tumor, right here. I've got four months, tops. Wonderful news, really. I don't believe in an afterlife. I will never see my sister again. I will never tell her I love her. I will never tell her I'm sorry. She died believing a lie. And that's how we will remain. That's it.